to measure reaction rate. We actually did a little bit of this already. Um, but first what I'm going to do is draw a little profile here. So let's say we have the reaction, reactants go to product. Just something really simple. Uh, and if you had that class before, you've seen this before. Uh, this little reaction profile, it shows how the concentration changes over time. So I'll just put C for concentration and T for time. C for concentration, T for time. Uh, and you can imagine, let's say uh, we start off with the initial concentration of the reactants way up here at the top. You can imagine as it reacts over time, that concentration will go down. So it'll follow some sort of profile, let's say like this. Now let's say the product started off at zero. So the product, initial concentration of the products, this little zero, this initial, initial concentration of products started off at zero. You can imagine that those go up, that one goes up over time. And both of them at some point level off right there. Uh, we're not going to worry about that too much right now, but let me label this. So this is the current concentration of R and the current concentration of P. Uh, does anybody know or remember after this point on the right hand side, what is this state called? This is equilibrium. So we studied equilibrium already when we did equilibrium tables. Weak acid, pH calculations, all that sort of stuff is over here. At the end of this uh, chapter, you'll see how they mathematically relate. We haven't learned enough yet to relate them. But this transient area here, uh, and really all of it, um, is not, it, or the left-hand side is not at equilibrium, but we can find where, wherever we're at the rate of the reaction. And this is how you do it. You get out a different pen color. Let's say I wanted to know, I don't like that color. Here we go. The rate right here. What's the rate of reaction right there? Well, first of all, you draw a bigger dot. Okay. And then you draw what's called the tangent line to that dot. So this is the tangent. And this is the instantaneous reaction rate. Does anybody know how you find the tangent? Yeah, if you know some advanced calculus, you can take the, if you knew this function, you take something called the derivative. We're not going to do that in this class. Uh, so first, let's find an easier way to find the rate. Uh, what you're actually going to do uh, is find the average rate, uh, and you call it, call it the average reaction rate if you want, uh, or sometimes called the, not instead of average, the general. So the general rate or the average rate of reaction. Uh, and you might have done this in calculus as well if you've taken a class like that. That's where you take two points, say like this, any two points and you draw a line through it, and you find the slope of this line. Well, to find the slope of the line, as long as you know those two points, what they are, you go change in y over change in x. So you can avoid uh, taking the derivative, uh, and that would be the average or general rate of reaction between points, say, 1 and 2. So if I redraw this a little bit, uh, just to make it a little more visible, uh, let's just say, we, again, we have concentration versus time. And we have a concentration drop going like that. And I, I know, let's say I know a bunch of points on this here. I measured them on my instrument or, or somewhere in my lab. These points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So say I'm measuring that in lab, wherever, as my reaction's going on. Then. I can find, say, the average or uh, average or general rate 
for say the two, three time interval. So I can find the average rate between points two and three. And so that would be the change in concentration over the change in time for points from points two to three. Uh, and all that would be is the concentration at 3 minus the concentration at 2, change in y over change in x. Time at 3 minus time at 2. So you need to find, you know, these points on the x-y axis. Read them off. Uh, this would be t2, t3, uh, c3, and c2. And then you could get the average rate. Is this going to be a positive or negative number in, in our case here? It's going to be a, a negative number because uh, we're, in, in our case, we're doing it for the reactants right now. So it's going to be a loss. Uh, 